Let me guess, you've got more things to do than time you have to do it. That's a common dilemma we all face. Let's summarize this book and see if there are any tips that can help you achieve that little bit more in your life. Hi, I'm Chris, I'm a doctor, and one of the main messages from this book is the difference between productivity and effectiveness. It's important to use them both together synergistically to help you achieve your goals. But being productive is actually meaning that with the resources you've got and that given amount of time, you're producing something. Whereas effectiveness is more of an ability, like any skill, you can build it up almost like a muscle by doing the reps. And that's how you engage in a set of actions to produce a desired outcome that you want. So almost if you could set your life's compass in that of um, an outcome that you're wanting to achieve, i.e. the right productivity, then use effectiveness to take steps towards that goal. It can really help. Now, any book on time management will have a lot about email management. The main things to do are to immediately action those emails that you can immediately action. Other things are actually educating other people how to use emails. Please don't reply to all, right? Also, ask people a direct question. It's often better to pick up the phone because people can misread emails. But also, if you're telling other people, I'll only check my emails twice a day, please make a clear subject line and at the top of it, put the action that you may want me to undertake. You need to do that yourself. Lead by example. Now, the book has a daft suggestion, in my humble opinion, about managing all of your emails in folders. Personally, I used to manage lots of files and folders, but found that when technology improved, the search function is a much better way of finding the relevant email. People are different, you know that, we're all different, that's what makes the world a good place at times. But realize people all see time differently as well. Now you can broadly, I, you could put people into two categories, organized or last minute. Now an organized person may have time allocated for each task. They've got a deadline coming up, it's two weeks ahead. So they've scheduled their time so that they've done this days before. A last minute person, just as the uh, title suggests, perhaps won't do that and will be more productive at the last minute to get that deadline in place. Now you may think, well, the last minute people they're not as good as organized people or vice versa. But ultimately, not one of these people are right. There's different ways of managing. And if you've got a team, if you can identify the type of team members you've got, you can balance their skills and abilities to actually make your team perform better. So for example, say you've suddenly had a last minute deadline thrown on to you and you've got people who are an organized type, they may say, no, this cannot be done. Whereas if you've got last minute people, they'll juggle, shuffle, walk backwards and do things to get this done. So you could classify these type of people as monochromes. These would be people who see time as a fixed, rigid mechanism. And these may be great if they're going in a career such as engineering in which you can do one thing at a time with incredible focus and they commit it to jobs and projects. Whereas a polychrome, they perceive time quite differently, almost as a flexible thing. And a polychrome, they can actually think a moment can do several things. So you could be simultaneously doing many things and they would be multitasking. And if somebody who's ultra organized, a monochrome, they may interact with a polychrome and think, oh, they're not paying attention. They're not committed to the task. So there's a meeting that appears, somebody appears late. Others may judge them. Why are they late? Whereas in fact, if they took a second to say, look, my car broke down, my dog was sick, blah, blah, blah. So we must never judge other people who perhaps 
use their time differently from how we would use our own time. So don't fool yourself that different time preferences are better. And just let's take a moment to think now about activities. Life's short, unfortunately, so we need to decide and prioritize activities that have meaning for us, almost that best bang for the buck. And what would give the greatest payoff from the time you're investing now to help your life? And it's the activities that really matter, that are the most meaningful and rewarding to you that will help you with your life the most. So focus on those. And if you could do one more thing, it would be to share this video. I'll see you next time. Take care.